Hey family, so here we are, uh, obviously doing an inspection on a home. Um, a lot of people have asked me, uh, how do you inspect an electrical panel? What are the steps involved? Uh, so basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through on how I inspect this electrical panel and just point out some of the deficiencies that I find along the way. So uh, let's buckle up and get this thing started. So the first thing that I do when I come up to the panel is obviously make sure it's not energized because I don't wanna grab an electrical panel that is. Um, as you can see, we're actually missing one screw to the panel itself. So here in just a minute, we're gonna be pulling those screws out to make sure that they are blunt end screws and that they don't have a pointy end because that can actually damage a conducting wire on the inside of the panel. And we should also see that we have cutler hammer breakers all the way up and down the bus bars. And we're also gonna look just to make sure that we have adequate labeling throughout all of the breakers. So as you can see in the very top, we actually have a mix of new and older wiring. Uh, so we may see some deterioration of wires on the inside, and we may see some splices on the inside of this electrical panel too. Okay, so now we've got the dead front cover off, and here are the screws that um, came out of the, the panel itself. So they are blunt end screws. They are actually required to be, um, because if you notice, we have conducting wires on the sides. So if you were to actually screw in a pointy tip screw, you could actually damage the conducting wire and electrocute yourself. Okay, so the first thing that I look at inside the panel is the overall condition. You can see that we've got some debris, which is not uncommon due to the age of the home. So we're gonna go kind of work our way from the top down. So coming in, we can see that we have 4 aught aluminum. And you can also see that the electrician used an antioxidant paste called Nolox. What that's gonna do is prevent any type of shifting as those wires corrode. Now, one of the next things that I'm gonna look for are double taps. So these breakers are not designed to have double tap conducting wires. So I'm gonna make sure that each breaker has one wire per lug. And that looks great on the right side. And it looks great on the left side. Now we're gonna take our attention to the actual conducting wires themselves. So we've got some white neutral wires that are technically used as conducting sources for this breaker that's being, uh, that's actually feeding those conducting wires. You're supposed to mark those with either black electrical tape or a black Sharpie. Me personally, I like the electrical tape way simply for the fact that it won't fade over time. So now what we're gonna do is that we've got the primary inspection out of the way to make sure that we don't have any uh, double tapped breakers, I'm just going to look to make sure that we have adequate wire sizes on the breakers themselves. For instance, 30 amps, 10 gauge wire or, or uh, higher or lower in this case, 20 amps should have 12 gauge, so on and so forth. So we're going to go down. So the smallest breaker that I actually see inside of the panel is a 20 amp. So we should actually not have anything uh, smaller than a 12 gauge wire, which we already don't because I've just looked just a moment ago. Um, so as you can tell, we have adequate sizes per these breakers. So one thing that I am gonna write up is more of a best practice, is you can see where they wired in this new 30 amp double pole breaker, which apparently is labeled dryer. They ran the conducting wires underneath the service entrance. That's generally not a best practice. What they should have done is run those wires on the outside of the panel and then into the breaker. Is it a big deal? No. Is it kind of one of those things that probably should have been done the right way? Absolutely. If we take a look down here at the neutral and ground bus bars on both the right and the left side, we actually see um, multiple grounds per lug. Now that does work and it is efficient, but if you have all of these extra lugs, it would probably behoove you to move one of those ground wires to the lug above or the lug below, just due to the torque value required for the wire itself. And we have another one there and a couple more up top. And as far as the neutral bus bar, we still have some more grounds on the right-hand side, but that's quite all right. And as you can see, we do have some, uh, some spliced wires, which are perfectly fine. They are allowed to be terminated inside of the panel. Now coming around, looking at the top of the panel, one of the things that I'm looking for is to make sure we have adequate bushings to protect the wires coming into the panel, because if the wires come in contact with sharp metal edges, they can actually fray over time as your house moves. Overall, the panel is in fairly good condition. Just a couple minor recommendations. Um, but other than that, I think it looks great. 
and I don't really have any other qualms. So like I said, one of the biggest things slash best practices would just be to move those two conducting wires that go to that 30 amp double pulp breaker um, for the dryer. Just move them to the outside of the panel. But other than that, the panel looks good. Uh, I'm just gonna tell the buyer, my client, just to consult with a qualified electrician for further review, just to potentially either move those wires or get their opinion. So I hope this helps. And this is how I myself looked at this breaker panel here at this house today.